Hello. So in today's read aloud, I have found a book that I think you will all enjoy. It's a book that's actually going to teach us something about animals. I know the kids in this class are big fans of animals, and I thought that we could start thinking about some cool life cycles of animals that are born from eggs. So this book is called An Egg is a Quiet Place, and it's written by Diana Aston and Sylvia Long. One of the reasons why I love this book is because the drawings are very realistic and very detailed. These are like scientific drawings. They're almost, they almost look like a photograph of what the real life version would look like. That's a scientific drawing. So I hope you enjoy the illustrations and I hope you enjoy some of the things that we'll learn in this book. So it's called, An Egg is a Quiet Place. Like for example, here we can see the black swallowtail butterfly. That's really beautiful. An egg is a quiet place. So this is an egg for a black necked stilt. I believe a black neck stilt is a bird. It sits there under its mother's feathers, on top of its father's feet, or buried beneath the sand, warm and cozy. So up here, we can see where the egg is underneath its mother's feathers. That is called Anna's hummingbird. Then below, the egg that sits on top of its father's feet, that is the emperor penguin. You can see the little egg there, nestled in. And then, it shows here, turtle is called Kemp's Ridley Sea Turtle. So this is not an actual size drawing, but it shows how the turtle lays its eggs in the sand, which is another warm place for the egg to grow and develop before it hatches. It's important for eggs to be kept warm. An egg is colorful. This is really neat to see how many different colors of eggs there are. It almost looks like Easter eggs, but these are actually real eggs. I'm gonna just name a few of them here. See this little red dot? This is a king salmon, so that's a type of fish egg. A blue robin egg. A lobster, this is actual size. So that's what the actual size of a lobster's egg would be. A turkey egg. A, oh, there's just so many I can't decide, but I'll just let hold that up for you to take another look at all of those beautiful different eggs. An egg is shapely. There are round eggs, Kemp's Ridley Sea Turtle. There are oval eggs, like the ladybird beetle. It says that this is larger than actual size. There are pointy eggs, the common myrrh. And there are even tubular eggs. This is a dogfish egg. So round, oval, 
pointy and tubular. Tube, just like a tube. So I'll read you a little bit about each one of these eggs. So for the round sea turtle's egg, it, it says, sea turtles dig a hole in the sand with their flippers and lay up to 200 soft round eggs. Round eggs fit together nicely in tight spaces. This reminds me of last year when I was working at Heartland Forest and we had a turtle lay eggs in our playground, which is a, underneath the wood chips, which would make it a very nice warm spot for the turtle to incubate its eggs. Next, there are oval eggs. So this is the ladybird beetle. When ladybugs hatch as larvae, their first meal is often the case that they crawled out of. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. There are pointy eggs, like the common myrrh. Seabird eggs are pointy at one end. So if they're laid on a rock, ledges... So if they're laid on rock ledges, they roll around in safe little circles, not off the cliff. So remember when we were playing with our egg shakers and we were turning, we could roll them in one direction because one side was smaller and one side was bigger, just like this egg. So it will stay on the smaller point, move in a circle all the way around. And then finally, tubular legs. While most sharks give birth to live young, some sharks, like the lesser spotted dogfish, begin life in a leathery egg case with tendrils. So the tendrils are these squiggly things that are coming off the sides. The tendrils anchor the eggs to seaweed so they won't be swept away by the ocean current. The markings on some eggs help them blend in with their surroundings. This is called camouflage. Camouflage is an egg's way of hiding. An egg might be speckled, so it resembles rocks around it. Or it might be gray, the color of mud by a lake. An egg does not want to be eaten by a raccoon, a snake, a fox, or an insect. So it says here, Eggs are clever. Eggs are smart. They protect themselves by camouflaging into their background. Here's kind of an I spy. Can you spot the egg? Because it's blending into the background, trying to protect itself from predators. Eggs come in different sizes. An ostrich egg can weigh as much as eight pounds. That's almost as big as a cat. I remember my cat was about eight pounds. It is so big and so round, it takes two hands to hold one egg. Hummingbird eggs are about the size of a jelly bean. It would take about 2,000 hummingbird eggs to equal the size of one ostrich egg. Wow. So you could fit 2,000 hummingbird eggs inside of one ostrich egg. That's really cool. An egg is artistic. Apparently it says all of the eggs on this page are larger than actual size, but you can see how beautiful. Why do you think the author says that eggs can be artistic when you look at this page? Take a look at each one of these eggs. There are hard eggs. I'm sorry, it says an egg is textured, so they feel different. There are hard eggs and soft eggs, gooey eggs, smooth eggs, and rough eggs. 
So the hard egg, it says, bird eggs are hard. And it says the boat-tailed grackle. Soft eggs, it says green iguana. It says reptiles' eggs are often soft and rubbery. That's interesting. Amphibian eggs, gooey eggs. This is from the leopard frog. Amphibian eggs are gooey. The goo helps to keep them from drying out. And that makes sense because amphibians usually need to live in the water. Or actually, I think they always do. They need to be able to breathe through their skin. Well, salamanders don't live in the water, but they do start their life in the water. And they do like damp places. Most eggs are smooth. It shows the black vulture. And then it says, the eggs of cassowaries, emus, and cormorants are rough. An egg might even be fossilized. So fossils, though that's when something is in a rock for so long that it imprints itself into the rock. So often when we talk about fossils, we're thinking about dinosaurs or things from a very, very, very long time ago. The remains of creatures that died millions of years ago may become rock hard or fossilized. Scientists have unearthed fossilized dinosaur eggs all around the world. Some are round, some are oblong, some are as small as one inch across. About this distance between my fingers. Some are as large as 20 inches, so that would be like, well, that's 12, so let's say that that's about 20. So that would be a really big egg. So scientists believe all dinosaurs hatched from eggs. An egg is giving. An egg gives the little creature growing inside everything it needs. The shell is its home. The yolk is its food. The egg white or albumen is its pillow. So it nestles into the egg white. The shell is covered with teeny tiny holes which allow the air to enter. So this is a cool picture. It shows you different stages of life. This is a chick after three days. Then after seven days it grows to be that large. 13 days it grows and you can see it's starting to have its beak. 18 days it's starting to have its feathers and then after 21 days it hatches. Here we can also see the salmon growing. This goes two weeks to five weeks, eight weeks, 11 weeks it hatches. So that ta it takes longer for a salmon to grow than it takes for a chick to grow. And then here at the bottom this is the grasshopper embryo two days five days seven days 15 days later it is i think born it's hatched at that point an egg is quiet then suddenly what do you think is going to happen in this picture suddenly an egg is noisy Cheep, 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 cheep. And then here, we have a picture of all kinds of different animals that have hatched from eggs. So I see a paradise rifle bird, a fork-tailed storm petrel, a blue crab, a katydid insect. A harlequin bug, blue jay, green iguana, field cricket, ladybug, or they're calling it a ladybird beetle. What else? A frog, 
a green vegetable bug, a lobster, la a green lacewing, and all kinds of birds. That's really neat. A fish. So that's the end of the story, my friends. I hope you found that as interesting as I did. I really enjoy learning about animals and their different stages of life. For the follow-up activity, I would like for you to draw a picture of one type of animal that we talked about in this book that hatches from eggs. I have drawn a picture of a turtle. I drew my picture of a turtle laying on a log enjoying the sun because I know that turtles love to sunbathe. So underneath, I wrote, turtles hatch from eggs. And then I said, turtles love to sunbathe. A fun fact about turtles. All right, my friends, I hope you have great fun with this activity. So draw an animal that hatches from an egg, and if you would like to share a fun fact, please do. All right, thank you.